the DeBronto girls, aren't you? Yeah. Right. I like you all. too. Oh, and Fia doesn't look like I will forget you. That makes four, doesn't it? No five. Oh, well, now, is that all there is? That's all there is. There isn't any more. <laughs> you like to learn too? Because right where you are, right at home, you can learn how to samba. You see, there is one thing that's hard to remember, and that is that you say samba. So remember to say samba and you'll be all right. The Brazilians decided a long time ago when they first invented the dance that all you had to be able to do was enjoy yourself. It was later than they thought. And they said, well, if you bounce up and down, it'll make a dance much more fun. So that's what the samba is. It's just that gentle little bounce. You try it, just flex your knees and go up and down. Let the spirit blow you along. Because the samba itself is very simple. Here, for instance, is one of the most popular steps, and it's very easy. Watch it. It's just forward and back, and forward and back. But when you add the bounce to it, and could I have some music, please? Then become. And you can turn around as you do it. Oh, it's just a snap. Now, I think you ought to practice that by yourself so I can go on and show you one more step. Because the same step can be done to the side with the bounce, like this. And music. Now, what could be easier? Would you try it with me? I'd like to have you see how it looks with a partner. The same two steps, all right? Thank you so much. Wasn't that a snap? And you know, I'd like to have you see our teachers do a few variations of those same steps. Are you ready? Will you do a dance?
And one little girl came up to me a minute ago, and she said, do you have a pull with Andy Russell? And mm -hmm. I said, well, a little bit, you know, I'm Bob's <laughs> wife. And she said, well, would you do something for me? I'd love to have something that belongs to Andy Russell to put in my memory book. Well, anything at all, Kathy. Anything? Just, just anything. Huh? Oh, Andy, you mean, could I, for instance, well, just take that? Oh. <laughs> that, 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 that? Uh, and you know, there was another little girl, and she said, couldn't I have something, too? And you know, there's just one more little girl, and she said she'd love to. You don't mind, no, do you? No, no, not you at You know, all. Andy, maybe you ought to sing before you lose your shirt. Yeah. Huh? Bye, now. With a song in my heart, I behold your adorable face. Just a song at the start, but it soon is a hymn to your grave. When the music swells, I'm touching your hand. It tells me you're standing near. And at the sound of your voice, Heaven opens its portals to me. Can I help but rejoice that a song such as ours came to be? But I always knew I would live life through with a song in my heart for you. Such a wonderful audience to Andy. I'm Mrs. Russell. Della. With a song in my heart. Della. I behold your adorable face. Yeah. Yes. Look, honey, you weren't supposed to come out now. You see, I was supposed to introduce you to the folks first, then you were supposed to come out. You see, well, I was... yes, I know, dear, but just a minute, please. I'm sorry. As I was saying, when Andy and I were first married, he had a job in radio. And it was the funniest thing you ever saw the way those cute little bobbies Look, honey. Were... Honey, shall we stop all the talk? The folks would like to see you. Show them besides, honey, it's just wonderful working with you. You've got a very lovely voice. Well, thank you. Of course, you've got the kind of a voice we singers call us. Well, it's more of a more of a blending voice, honey. Well, what do you mean a blending voice? Well, you see, ladies and gentlemen, I've I've taught Della all she knows about singing, and although her voice isn't quite as trained as I'd like it to be. Just I... a minute, Andy. What's the matter? What do you mean my voice isn't trained? Well, honey, do I was you just... have such a perfect voice? Well, I... are you the perfect singer? Now you just listen to me and I'll tell you. Nobody's perfect. Not even me. Nobody ever had such modesty. When we're together, just me and me. Just how conceited can a fella be? What do you mean? I've never seen an ego to compare. Now look, Della, compliments will get you nowhere. Oh, well. You're the ideal gent. That's better. You're heaven sent. The perfect man, I guess, is what I am, dear. Well, then you'd better take it on the lamb, dear. Yeah, but why? Because, brother, you could be replaced. You're a moonlit sky. Oh, you mean I'm a real gone guy. You're everything a girl could ever long for. You mean to say you're feeling kind of strong for. Oh, brother, you could be replaced. Well, I could be replaced, huh? Well, I guess I'm just in... Just an also ran, that's all. Oh, Andy, I was only kidding, honey. Yeah, I could never yeah, replace yeah. you. Well, you're such a wonderful husband. And besides, you've got so much talent, honey. Do you really think so? Well, naturally, Andy. But of course, you know, there are other people who are just as talented. Uh, what'd you say? I said there are other people who are just as talented as well, you. Well, you just name one other singer that you think has got more talent than I have. Well, just name one. Name Bing one. Well, there's Crosby, Frank Sinatra, Perry Como, Dick Hames, Tony Martin, Frankie Lane, Al Jones, Clark Dennis, Bro Wait Clark. a minute now. I mean besides them. Now, <laughs> you can't think of one, can you? I didn't think you could. You know, I heard you mention Tony Martin. You like the... You like the suave, sophisticated type like Tony Martin, yes, huh? Yes, I do. I like you do. him. A little Tony Martin music, please. Oh, just let them begin to begin. Let them play. Till the stars that were there before return above you. Till you whisper to me once more, darling, I love you. When they begin. The big
Lord. Huh? Cinderella, I heard you mention something about Frankie Lane. You like the happy type like Frankie oh, Lane, I huh? I love it. I just love it. A little Frankie Lane music, please. To spend one night with you. Adela, Adela, it's a wonder you didn't mention Clark Gable. Clark Gable? Yeah. Oh, I think he's so wonderful. Oh, you do, huh? Jim over here, baby. Come on down here. <laughs> now you here, girl. Dad will go for that doser. I'm getting darn sick of it, too, dear. I'm crazy about you, girl. I think you're George all the way. Yeah. <laughs> Dad, I'm, I'm so crazy about you, girl. I can't sleep and I can't eat. Frankly, I'm getting pretty darn hungry. <laughs> <laughs> Of course, Stella, you know, you know, Clark Gable can't sing. You know that, don't you? Andy. Yeah? Clark Gable doesn't have to sing. Well, do you have to say that in front of all these people here? I guess I'm just a, just a waste of time, that's all. Oh, Andy, as far as I'm concerned, you've got more oomph than Mr. Gable. You think I'd stand a chance with Betty Grable? Hmm? Well... Could be yes. indubitably, Tell but me. definitely, indisputably. And that goes for me. Right. There'll never be another girl in the world for me. No, you could never, ever, 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 ever be replaced. I realize why Ken Murray carries a cigar because if I came out too soon, I could always shuck my ashes that way. But I think it really is... I think it's wonderful to see a husband and wife who can sing together. And I think it's wonderful to see those who can dance together. And each week, we salute the pupils who have been chosen as the most popular students in their own Arthur Murray School. And this week, our pupils of the week are from the Newark, New Jersey School, and they're right over here. Oh, New Jersey's up there. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Frank Cavora, would you join me? <laughs> Tell me, are you thrilled at being chosen pupils of the week? Oh, yes, I am. Are you, and are you too? Yes, very much. Are you nervous? A little yes, bit? Yes, <laughs> You are a little bit nervous. Well, that's good. I love to make people awfully nervous. It's my only chance. Now, over here, I have something which I must show because now my husband says that he can make guaranteed nylons, Arthur guaranteed nylons. I think it's a rather odd performance for a dancing teacher to go into the stocking business, but I suppose there's some sort of footstep in common. Anyway, he is going to send you a year's supply of nylons. You Great. can admire them. Yes. Thank you. You're not going to have them. <laughs> but uh, the Ben Russ Company is sending you a citation watch, which is very beautiful, oh, thank and they're you. sending you a calendar watch. Oh, nice. Now, a calendar watch tells you what time it is and what day of the week it is. And oh. this particular one, uh, about every hour, Mr. Ben Russ hops right out of the watch and he says, it's time to go to Austin Murray. Very good. You think that'll be good? Very good. You think I can talk him into doing it? Yes. <laughs> I'll try. Tell me, how did you happen to go to Austin Murray's? We were anxious to learn the Latin American dances. Latin American dances. You too? Yes. And did you learn them? We Quite well, I think. Well, now, tell me, did you just decide I want to learn Latin dance and just go in and sign up? No, I went up one evening merely for observation purposes. and I don't I was... think people can hear you. Would you speak a little louder? I went up one evening merely for observation purposes. Observation? Was... You make us sound as though we're something you put behind bars. I, truthfully, I didn't immediately, immediately register. You didn't register right I was right amazed away. as to oh. the tremendous amount of patience displayed by the various teachers and supervisors, and that convinced me. Their patience? In addition to their method of teaching and teaching ability. Well, isn't that nice? You say nicer things about Arthur Murray's than I do, and that's going to them. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me, uh, did you learn the Latin dances, you think? Tango, mambo, and You tango. like them all. Yeah, and did your husband take you dancing? Oh, yes, he does. <laughs> he better. I can see that look in your eyes. Well, we, we, truthfully, we really love it. You really love it. Now, we, does he take you dancing more now than he used to before he went to Murray? Definitely. Well, maybe I'll send my husband to Arthur Murray. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> you know, Mrs. Burry required yes. about four hours to convince my wife here to attend. Four hours to convince now her? Now there's nothing in the world to keep her from. Before. You mean I have a spy in the midst, <laughs> treason in the ranks? <laughs> Tell me this, uh, what, uh, does dancing help you in your business at all, Mr. Kapora? It affords me a great deal of relaxation. Relaxation? What is your business? I'm with the Internal Revenue. You what? <laughs> Speak up, man. You what? I'm with the Internal Revenue. You're with the Internal Revenue. Oh, dear. <laughs> well, I, there's a question I'd like to ask you. May I? Do you mind? I know it's not business hours, but if the sponsor is your husband, is he deductible? <laughs> <laughs> I have another question, and this one I'm serious about. This is sort of a bargain. Would you make a bargain with me? Yes. If I teach you some steps that you can learn right off, mm -hmm. would you teach me some steps that I can write off? <laughs> <laughs> would you? Here it comes. <laughs> okay. uh, tell me, what is your favorite among the Latin dancers? The tango. Will she actually has of three of them, but I have three. to learn all of them to cope with it. Oh, now you see what goes on. Who's the weaker half in your family? <laughs> would, would you do a little tango for us? Yes. Good. mystery dance, and if you know the name of it and you write it down on a penny postcard and send it to your nearest Arthur Murray studio, you will win a certificate, which is good for two private half-hour lessons in any dance that you'd like to learn. So watch the mystery dance and see if you know the name. <laughs> mail it before tomorrow night to your nearest Arthur Murray studio and get your certificate for two half-hour private lessons in whatever dance you choose. All right? Now, uh, at this time, I have a little three-question quiz that I'd like to ask. Who is the man who um, was responsible for making us know that the whip and poop is a song and not a sneeze? Rudy Oh, well, that's right, but this one's a little tougher. Now, who, uh, what famous crooner has the initials R.V.? Rudy and who do you think I'm going to bring out right now? Rudy Just imagine, I'm standing right next to the man who made that wonderful picture of the vagabond lover. That's a picture we never mention in our family. <laughs> <laughs> Why, Rudy, I've been a fan of yours for just years and years and years. Ever since Lincoln's inaugural, I believe. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I didn't mean that in a mean way at all, because I have a favor that I want to ask of you. Favor? I'd be very happy yes, to grant uh, it. On the level? Yeah. Really? Would you? I wish you would. I'd be very happy to. 
This is a very unusual Arthur Murray party. Believe it or not, we have with us a pair of newlyweds, a young married couple who were just married tonight. And it's very unusual for Sunday evening. It's unusual for any evening as far as that goes. Uh, let's see if I can... <laughs> Nothing wrong with my eyes. My arm isn't long enough. <laughs> have you fellows noticed that the printing is getting smaller? <clears throat> I think... I think the trains are leaving sooner, too. I've given up trying to catch them. And the material and clothing is what it used to be. You get a suit today, and about a year later, it starts to shrink right around here. <laughs> One thing I'm sure you fellows have noticed, they're making the martinis much stronger than they used to. I might as well resort to it. Let's see what we've got here. Mr. and Mrs. George Breitman he is president of the uh, Summit Clothing Company of 105th Avenue, New York City. They were married tonight at 5 o'clock. That's just about four hours completely wasted. <laughs> what, they are, what they are doing here, I wouldn't know. As a veteran of three campaigns, <laughs> holder, holder of the Purple Heart and the Order of Alimony. Alimony, did you boys ever stop to think that alimony is like feeding oats to a dead horse? <laughs> Thank you, fellow sufferers. Or it might be called the high cost of leaving. I feel thoroughly qualified to offer this young couple. They didn't put down the table number, so I can't ask them to take a bow. They probably couldn't stand up anyway after all that champagne. Let's see, uh, what do we do? I think I'm thoroughly qualified to offer them a little musical consolation, if I can find the right musical thought. It's a little too late for Oh Promise Me, isn't it? The damage is done. Have you any thoughts over there at the piano? Another bride, another groom, another sunny honeymoon, another season, another reason for making poopy. A lot of shoes, a lot of rice. The groom is nervous, he answers twice. It's really killing that he's so willing to make poopy. Picture a little love nest. Down where the roses cling Picture this same sweet love nest And think what a year can bring He's washing dishes and baby clothes He's so ambitious, he even sews But don't forget, folks, that's what you get, folks For making the whoopee Another year, or maybe less What's this I hear? Well, can't you guess? She feels neglected He's been suspected of making whoopee. She sits alone most every night. He doesn't phone, he doesn't write. He says he's busy, but she says, is he? He's making whoopee. He doesn't make much money, only 5,000 per. Some judge who thinks he's funny, Says you pay six to her. He says, now, judge, suppose I fail. The judge said, budge, right into jail. You'd better keep her. You'll find it cheaper than making whoopee. Now, little girls who become big stars, when they get pearls and motor cars, it's not their voices that bring Rolls Royces. It's making whoopee. Now all those geezers in history, like Julius Caesar, Mark Antony, what caused their downfall and made their crowns fall was making whoopee. Back through the countless ages, you'll find it everywhere. Somebody makes good wages, and somebody wants her share. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Seventy thirty. She calls him toodles and rolls her eyes. She bakes him strudels and makes him pies. What is it all for? Just so he'll fall for making poopy. <laughs> Thank you.
sorry, Susan. There I go again with my two left feet. Oh, that's all right, David. You couldn't help it. You know, I keep promising myself that I'll go to Arthur Murray's and really learn how to dance, but... But what, David? Well, to tell you the truth, I figure it'll cost an awful lot of money. Oh, that's silly. Don't you know that you can learn how to dance at Arthur Murray's and pay as little as well, $3.50 a week? That's where I learned. That's all I paid. Yes, it's a fact. The best dance lessons do cost less. And you can learn to dance the Arthur Murray way by paying as little as $3.50 per week. Now, the reason for that is really simple. Let me show you. You see, Arthur Murray spent years analyzing all our popular dances. Then he perfected the famous Arthur Murray Magic Step. The Magic Step is easy to learn, and once you've learned it, you've learned the key to every other type of dance. Yes, it's really as simple as that to learn to dance the Arthur Murray way. It's so simple and it's so quick. Naturally, the cost is very low. Now, you're invited to drop into your nearest Arthur Murray studio for a free trial lesson. Let an Arthur Murray teacher show you that you can dance the famous Arthur Murray way after just a single lesson. There's no obligation, so make that appointment now. Phone your nearest Arthur Murray studio right now. There's an Arthur Murray teacher waiting to take your call.